Hello everyone, I'm Harley from GardenFL and in today's video we're going to do a quick review and comparison of some different anonas I found here in Cali, Colombia. For example, right here I have a sugar apple in my hand which is a very common fruit in Florida. It's actually one of my favorite fruits in Florida. And we have some other fruits right here such as a cherry moya which can also be found in Florida but we have a hard time growing in Florida. And then we have anona mercata which is known as soursop or guanamana which can be grown in Florida but sometimes in Florida the trees have a hard time due to the trees being a very tropical fruit tree. So in this video, we're gonna talk about some similarities between all these fruits because if you didn't know, these fruits are all part of the Ananaceae family, which is a pretty big group of tropical fruit trees that have really good fruits that I love. So in this video, we're gonna be opening them and seeing how they look like inside and also noting the similarities, differences, and also how they taste. So let's get started. So the first fruit that we're gonna talk about today is a cherimoya. Botanical name is Anona cherimola. And this cherimoya is actually native to the Andes Mountains. So here in Colombia, as you see, they're huge because uh, they're native to this region. As you see, they're almost the size of my head. I almost don't see cherimoyas this size in Florida, only because they can't grow in Florida too well. Although they have fruited and flowered in Florida, but the reason why they don't grow too well in Florida is because the cherimoya, Anona cherimola, actually needs some type of highlands. So, uh, you know, here in Colombia, there's a lot of mountains. In California, they grow these a lot. That's why you see, that's why in Florida, a lot of our cherimoyas that you see in stores do come from California because California has mountains and Florida is just all flat. It's, um, you know, not ideal for growing cherimoya. And also in Florida, there's a little too much heat for cherimoya. So, and although it is difficult to grow in Florida, it still is possible. I still know many people, I, I still have a lot of tropical fruit friends that have uh, successfully fruited cherimoya. Now the cherimoya fruit is actually very sweet. It almost has no acid flavor unlike the soursop. So it's just a, overall just a really beautiful fruit. The next anona we're gonna talk about is sugar apple, also known as anona squamosa. Now this sugar apple is very common in Florida. In Florida, it's actually a really ideal location to grow sugar apple. Now people also call sugar apple the anona of the lowlands only because uh, sugar apple actually prefers lower elevation to grow. That's why it's really ideal for Florida. And actually in California, on the contrary, growing sugar apple is a little more harder just because sugar apple is actually a little less cold tolerant than the cherimoya. So if you're growing sugar apple in California or in a colder climate, you may struggle and you may be better off growing something like a cherimoya, which is more adapted to those higher elevations to those colder uh, climates. Now the taste of sugar apple is mainly sweet. There's usually no acid whatsoever and it has a really good custard taste. It tastes like kind of pineapples and mangoes together. Now this next anona that we're going to talk about is anona mercata also known as soursop guanabana graviola. There's many names for this fruit. This fruit is actually sought out by many just because of the really good uh, healing properties that is associated with this fruit. If you guys don't know this fruit is associated with healing a lot of type of uh, illnesses that you may have and every part of the tree can be used of the soursop as well as uh, cherry moya or sugar apple but for some reason soursop kind of gets a spotlight of its healing properties i think it's just because you get so much meat in the soursop but overall you know i really love soursop and the taste of soursop is a mix between sweet and acidic that's why i kind of get the name soursop but overall as you see the soursop can actually get very big here we'll do a quick uh, comparison with the cherry moya now this is actually a really big cherry moya so you see uh, it gets pretty big the soursops and you get a lot of meat for this one and actually the best way to consume soursop in my opinion is to make a drink with it although you can eat it out of hand uh, just like a cherry moya or a sugar apple now i also do want to share with you a different variety of soursop because this soursop i actually harvested from my farm these two but this soursop right here i actually bought from finlandia colombia and the reason i bought this one is because this soursop variety is different from the two you see here it is more spikier and i really like the prominent spikes on this it kind of reminds me like of a durian or uh, of a really cool kind of spiky tropical fruit. So this one we're gonna try to be propagating and growing in Florida. So I think it'd be really cool to grow a spiky variety of guanamana. Now another quick fact is here in Colombia, we actually have 25 different varieties plus of guanamana, but I believe 25 of them are uh, you know fairly well documented. And this is one of them. For now, we'll just call it the spiky guanamana because I'm not sure of the actual uh, variety or cultivar this guanamana is. And for the last unknown that we're gonna be reviewing is actually atemoya. Now atemoya is actually a cross between two other anonas, which will be the sugar apple and the cherry moya. So when you cross both of these, you get the atemoya, and atemoya is also very ideal for growing in California or in Florida due to its ability to adapt to colder regions as well as lowland regions. So this is the atemoya. So the first fruit that we're gonna cut open and take a look at is the soursop, also known as guanamana. Now we're gonna be cutting open the spiky one because although these can be opened up too, we're gonna leave them for maybe tomorrow to clean. So we're gonna cut into the guanamana like this. We're gonna try to make one clean cut. 
<laughs> it's duro. This sour stuff actually weighs 14 pounds. So that's why it's a little difficult to call it all the way open. Wow. Look at that. It's beautiful. As you see, the inside of the guanabana is very similar to how any other anona would look like. And as you see, you can eat it like this, the pulp. But like I said, I like to make juices out of it, but it's no problem. You can just eat it like this. Mmm. This one's actually very sweet, although it still has some acidic. But it's still more sweet than sour. So here's a closer look at it inside. As you see, it has very much a uh, resemblance of a uh, sugar apple or cherry moya if you, if you slice it open like I did. And as you see the seeds, they kind of remain in little pockets alongside the side. And then what's, uh, what's similar between all unknown is, is they kind of have this inside meat part that goes all the way down, which is inedible, but that's actually the stem of the fruit. So you see all the edible meat of this. And like I said, you can easily just take it out like this and you can eat on this part or you can make a juice with it. It's very good. This variety is very sweet. I'm actually very surprised with this uh, spiky guanabana. The next anona that we're going to be taking a closer look at is the cherimoya, anona cherimola. Now this fruit is actually very sweet compared to uh, soursop. Now sometimes people even say some cherimoyas can be too sweet. And as you see this cherimoya is in fact huge. And what classifies a cherimoya different than a sugar apple or a soursop is just by the skin. The easy way you could tell is that the cherimoyas typically are very smooth skinned. And they kind of have like this little indent where your thumb can, you know, usually just rest in. So that's one way you can easily identify cherimoyas. Although some cherimoyas actually can be spiky skin like a soursop. So there are different varieties of cherimoyas out there. But this variety of cherimoya is very uh, smooth skin. So let's take a closer look on the inside. So just like the soursop, we're going to open it the same way. We're just going to split it right down the middle. So as you see, this is the beautiful insides of the cherimoya. You're going to easily be able to tell how the anonas all look similar on the inside. Like I said, usually typically towards the outside, they have these little seed pockets and the inside you still get the stem, the inedible part. And as you see all along, you kind of get the seeds in the same placements as a, like I said, like a sugar apple or a guanabana. So just to give you a side by side comparison, as you see the the cherimoya and guanabana have very much the same similarities. As you see, they have a beautiful kind of bright white inside pulp. And as you see, the seed placement is kind of, they're tucked in away in their own little uh, pockets. So as you see, and even the seeds look very similar on uh, both of these species. Now, like I said earlier, the cherimoya is in fact very sweet. Now we're just going to cut it a little bit open right here. So we're going to see if we can just like take a little bite of it. Mmm. Mmm. Very sweet. In fact, there's no sourness of all, at all, when it comes to uh, cherry moya. Very sweet. Mm. I like it a lot. Now the cherry moya, it tastes close to like a pineapple and a mango mixed together. And like I said, it's all sweet, no acidic taste. So if you're really into really sweet fruits, I really recommend you guys trying a cherimoya. Mm. Very good. The next anona that we're gonna take a closer look at is a sugar apple. Now this sugar apple might not be as uniform as a cut as a cherimoya and soursop was, only because the sugar apple is really ripe, really ready to open, but we're gonna go ahead and try to open it. So here we are opening the sugar apple. As you see, the sugar apple is best just eaten at a hand. As you see, it's very seedy, and this one has maybe some uh, some insect that went inside it. There's some remnants of some bug, but for uh, demonstration purposes, we're just gonna try to keep it as uniform and side by side as possible. But as you see, the same thing with the sugar apple. As you see, it's very similar to the cherry moya. It still has a stem on the inside and the sugar apple is a little more custardy and um, the skin and the meat inside is actually a lot more kind of uh, loose, much looser kind of liquidy compared to a cherimoyo. As you see, the cherimoyo skin is very much intact as well as a guanamana. So that's some that's a difference between the sugar apple and the, the cherimoyo. Now also it depends on the ripening stage of the sugar apple. If you actually ate this a few more days before it got so soft, you can actually get it more at a stage where it's like this and more malleable and more workable. So it's not so liquidy like this. And the sugar apple actually tastes very sweet, not as sweet as a cherimoyo, but it still, it still has a, 
maybe a little bit of acidic taste but not it's not really noticeable at all it's more of a sweet custardy and kind of a light taste so i really like the sugar apple although this one is not the best example but you can kind of see uh, still the similarities and you can still tell it's uh, part of the ananasia family so we're going to set this sugar apple aside and we're actually going to look at the atemoya now this atemoya it looks like it's well past uh, its date i should have opened this many days ago and in fact when it's hard like this it's not edible anymore but for educational purposes we're going to take a look at it in inside and see we're going to see how much it looks like the other nonas that we open so like i said we're just going to do the same way we're going to open up this anona So as you see here it is inside the atemoya and like i said atemoya is actually a cross between the sugar apple and the cherry moya so this is kind of what it looks like as you see the the skin or the meat is actually very resemblance of a cherry moya uh, meat but it's still kind of uh you know it still does come apart when you open it as you see here are the seeds of the atemoya now i actually won't be eating this one but i'll actually be using it as uh just seeds and root stock but believe it or not, Atemoya is one of my favorite anonas out there just because of it, you know, of its taste and of its traits. You know, it has both of those cherimoya and sugar apple genetics. It kind of has the best of both genetics. It is very sweet and also has some acidic taste to it, which is very good. And also in Florida, I have a lot of named cultivars of Atemoya, such as Pipak Chong, Gefner, Lisa, Priestley. And some of those are my favorite uh, Atemoyas, one of them being Pipak Chong. So as you just see, uh, resemblance between all of these anonas. So as you see the Atemoya cherimoya sugar apple and then the soursop and just to go over with you you can kind of see a lot of the same uh, resemblances of all these uh, ananasia fruits and out of all these fruits my favorite one here is probably the soursop just because here in colombia soursops are really grown you know to the best of their ability and they do have a really unique taste here although i haven't really tried much soursops in florida but the ones that i've tried in florida typically are much more smaller and not as sweet or acidic as the ones here so as you see across the board we have all different type of anonas right here and i'm really happy that i was able to you know cut them open and kind of give you guys a rundown on each anona for example the soursop is very sweet and sour but still has a really good balance and is great for juices then we have the cherry moya which is mainly just sweet no acidic taste at all it has a really this one in fact has a really really good taste to it i'm going to finish eating this off camera once i'm done with this video and the sugar apples here are very good although this example is not too well just because it's you know it's almost uh past its date but as you see for example like we have this sugar apple right here this one's still very good to eat and then the atemoya which I, like i said the atemoya is a little ugly on the outside but as you see on the inside we could still see the similarities and differences between uh these these anonas so thank you guys so much for watching this comparison video of my anonas here in colombia i hope you guys learned something new i hope i explained something that maybe you didn't know about a certain anona and overall i'm just really happy to get my hands on all these to compare and contrast for you and you know show you the similarities and differences and also talk about a little bit about their taste texture how they look like how you can differentiate them and where they grow best in your zone so thank you guys once again i'm harley from garden fell i really love anonas and if you have an anona that you think i should grow or i should do a video on please let me know in the comments below or if you have a favorite fruit or fruit tree that you would like to see a, a in-depth look at please let me know i'll try to do my best to get that for you and make a video for you so guys once again i'm harley from garden fell and i hope you have a good day bye bye now